Hello, thank you for joining us for this International Women's Day feature. I am Hula Sedi Maguire and I am a near neighbours worker. I'm joined in conversation today by Reverend Eve Pitts and Dr. Amanda Arboyne. Reverend Eve is Britain's first black female vicar and Dr. Arboyne is a university lecturer who specialises in race and decolonization in education. Would mm -hmm. you please tell us uh, what being a powerful black woman means to you in your role? I always try to resist the, um, the description of being a powerful woman because um, I'm not quite sure what it means. I, I can, there are certain potholes I think that black women in particular can fall into is being the strong black woman, you know, the kind of mythology mm. which surrounds that, which has largely, um, it's like a, uh, it's an entrapment. Mm. It's trapped us into mm. this sort of false idea of who we think we are. And I think it's been very damaging. So I've really always tried, and I think it's important to hear that. I, I see the isolation that it creates in black women. If, you, you become afraid to, to ask for help. I decided as a young priest that I wasn't just going to be a priest. A priest in a sort of one-dimensional way. I wanted to be, remain a woman, a black woman, in all, all of her beauty. Because the whole system in the Church of England uh, I, doesn't lend itself very well to black people being at ease. So you're so busy fighting one dimension of your life and that's being the black person. That if you're not careful, you actually forget the, that you're much more than that. And I love being a priest, um, but I'm more than a priest. I'm just all of the above and more. Um, Dr. Arboy, would you like to share with us um, what being a powerful black woman means to you in your profession? <laughs> yes, it's an interesting term because I as well, Eve, felt mm, powerful. I don't know about that. I don't know how powerful I am. But as a black woman um, in a role as an, a black academic, um, it, it's quite interesting because on the one hand, education to me should be all about liberation. So educate to liberate, you know. So it's all about understanding yourself more, understanding the world we live in more, and understanding our place in that world. And so therefore being able to, especially from a, a background of, that's marginalized and oppressed, um, you know, education is this this potential, has this potential to to liberate you and to help you to know how to change the world that you live in and to make a, create a better life, a better world. But then on the other hand, you've got what is often the reality, particularly for black um, learners in education and for me as a black woman in education, um, that education is often for social control. And so you have this scenario where um, education can be a sort of a sorting process and disproportionately particularly at the school level, black children are sorted to be the losers instead of the winners. Um, and then it's also passes on into your career and creates the whole life of, you know, whether you get a good job or you don't get a job, good job and whether you get a good life or don't get a good life. Uh, but the big difficulty for me, one of the central issues that we need to deal with today in education and that my work focuses on is about uh, recognising that because our education system tends to focus on teaching us about mostly great white middle class ruling class men and how they have created this wonderful world and tells us very little about what we as a great people, as African heritage people, as Asian heritage people, of people from you know, indigenous American and, 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 and Australian people. There's very little in our curriculum that talks about what people of color have done and how we've contributed to society. And so what you can get is you can get people going through an education system and either switching off completely because they don't see any reflection of themselves um, as a black person um, or um, conforming because conformism is usually rewarded within the education system. So if you do what the teacher says and you agree with what the teacher says, you're more likely to succeed. If you're challenging some of the things that you're being taught, it makes it much harder to succeed. And if you as a black learner 
and not seeing yourself reflected in that curriculum and you're challenging, you know, somebody, for instance, saying Christopher Columbus discovered America and you're saying, well, actually, no, he didn't discover America because people were there already and Africans had traveled to America already. You know, um, people might find that too challenging and it, you can be written off, if you like, in terms of education. And so for me, this is why decolonizing the curriculum is really important. And that's about making sure that the curriculum in school, in college, in university, um, and, you know, throughout the education system starts to talk much more about our contributions of pe as people of colour to, to, to the society that we live in. Would you both mind sharing what problems you've encountered in your roles as a woman? Yeah, um, I think working, being a, being a vicar in the Church of England is uh, not easy as a black person, man or woman. The whole structure is um, not designed to make it easy for you. Uh, so you have to, first of all, recognize mm -hmm. that. And once you recognize that and identify the structures, if you come into the Church of England and you, you want to put your blackness on one side, then life is a lot easier. You can, you can move upwards, sideways, but, you know, uh, 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 but if you challenge the system in any way, then there's a pretty high price to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who knows me knows I don't challenge for the sake of it, but I challenge when I see a, a system that was largely iniquitous. Mm -hmm. And the images around us, all the images in our church buildings, if you look at this, it's all, it's all white images. And there's not been no real debate and discussion until very recently about how do we talk about God uh, and, and, and Christianity uh, and exclude large numbers of people. You know, and you're, you're, you're looking at it now, it seems ludicrous. I have come very close to, <laughs> have some close brushes with the hierarchy because I dared to stand up for what is right. And I dared to question the fact that um, we cannot, have images which tells us stories that are not totally true. Amanda, what problems have you encountered in your role as a black woman? Oh, what problems I've encountered? Well, um, in a few words, elitism, sexism, racism. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've spent most of my time, as I say, in education, and I've spent the best part of the last 20 years lecturing as, a, you know, um, being a senior lecturer and teaching within the education system and one of the things that you can't escape is how uh, white male dominated it is um, and um, although people in universities like to think that they're very open-minded and you know and they're very much into equality and fairness and they just have high standards when you're in that environment you realize that you are really um up against a, a, a very um, sexist, racist, elitist sort of establishment. And so for me, there is this problem of not being able to excel and to um, uh, grow within these establishments. Um, and, you know, so for example, excessive workloads have a mass, much bigger impact on women because of they tend to have more caring responsibilities. And then even when women do do well, they have issues of, you know, trying to break the glass ceiling. And then as a black woman, then you also have to transcend all these stereotypes, negative stereotypes of you as being black and not being, you know, being not being good enough and so on. So despite however much you might be proving yourself and doing more than your peers or, or as much as your peers, you're still up against these st negative stereotypes that, that are very sort of subtle, but very pervasive. How have you chosen to challenge these challenges that you've encountered? In my, in my position, I've spoken out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I've seen bishops and I've, I've not hidden how I feel. I've challenged it through sermons, through, I hope, a good example to my congregation that as a black woman, I, you can be confident without being bulky, uh, because I cope with the same structures that you cope with, Amanda, uh, you know, um, white men who um, think that they are the only ones with the answer. 
Thank you. Amanda, a few words, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Minute, yeah. uh, well, what I would say is it's very similar to Eve. It's, uh, it's about speaking out. So just by being in the university establishment as a black woman, that is challenging lots of stereotypes. Then my research is focused on race, class and gender, which again has given voice to experiences that often aren't reflected in the education system. And then sharing that with students so that they start to challenge the system as it is. Um, and ultimately, yeah, that's the way I've challenged it. From Reverend Eve and Dr. Amanda Arboyne, Thank you for joining these women who have chosen to challenge.